How are you doing? This is UK Fish ID videos. For these series of films, I'm going to show you how to identify various British fish, both from the sea and fresh water. We're going to go through what they eat, where they live, and how to identify them from similar species. If you'd like to learn more about identifying UK fish, then why not get my latest book? It's available online and in local bookshops. There's a link in the description if you're interested. This week I'm looking at the Arctic char, the brook trout and some of the weird and wonderful hybrids that they create. If you're into salmonids I also recommend that you check out our brown trout video and our salmon video to work out some of the weird hybrids and different species of salmonids that we have in the UK. Let's get into it. In this video we're looking at the char. This is char, brook trout and their hybrids. Now as usual I'm going to do my disclaimer you can't positively ID fish from colour alone. Fish change colour so rapidly according to health, age, sexual dimorphism, stress and the environment they live in. So colour is only to be used as a guide with other more accurate signs. I should also point out that I'm looking at this from a European perspective in that in Europe Arctic char are native and in parts of Europe they're fairly common whereas brook trout are non-native here and pretty sporadic in numbers. Whereas if you look at America or the United States, Arctic char are very rare. They're only found in, I think, Maine and brook trout are relatively common. So depending where you're watching this video might depend on which species you're more interested in, but I'll cover both anyway. So let's start with the Arctic char. Similar to brown trout, Arctic char are highly variable and come in many shapes and sizes. Most of the year, they're a silver color with a purple hue to it. They're generally quite slim and may have a blunt head, but when spawning in the winter, they undertake some incredible coloration. The bellies go a deep warm orange and the backs go an olive green. The fins take on a creamy white edging and the head will go darker. Although char are most commonly associated with staying in large lakes and locks, some do enter rivers. This is generally to spawn as they like the flows which help oxygenate the eggs, but other char will spawn on the lake bed in the margins. Char will inhabit different food niches. For example, some char will specialize in eating snails on the lake bed, while others will feed midwater, and some concentrate on surface feeding, with all these fish being found in the same water body. In terms of Britain, you can find char in a few places. The English Lake District has a few populations of char, as does North Wales, but Scotland has the biggest concentration of them by far, with over 250 locks having char in them. They like large lakes and locks, and that's the typical home for this fish, with some heading into flowing water to spawn. They're very occasionally stocked into fishing lakes, but more often it's the hybrid with book trout that is used, the Spartic or tiger trout, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Char were once an andromenous fish like salmon, reaching weights well over 20 pounds. But after the last ice age, the ice that was trapped in glacial lakes melted and became these large bodies of water. The char become much smaller and they generally stay in the deeper water. They're winter spawners waiting for a frost to trigger spawning, generally around November. Most landlocked char in the UK really get over 20 centimetres and you're lucky to catch them over a pound. Next up is the brook trout. Now they're not actually a trout but a char. They have stunning markings especially when breeding. The males have white piping on the fins and a vivid red belly. The mouth is very large and the body is spotted with yellow dots and green sides. Like all salmonids it has a soft dorsal fin and then behind a small adipose fin. In the 1970s, fish farming with trout became very popular and new species and hybrids were introduced. This is when brook trout really started to take off, although they were found in the UK way before this, up to the 1800s when stockings were made in various waterways. Brook trout were sought after for their vivid colors, hard fighting nature, and willingness to take a fly. The fad soon died out however, due to its small size and being more expensive than rainbow trout, so few fisheries stock them today. They favour cooler temperatures, staying in deep water in the summer, and they can be found in loose groups, although they're not an overly social fish. Because of their small size as well, 
they're more susceptible to predation from cormorants, so there's no point stocking an expensive fish that's going to get eaten by a cormorant. When we look at the distribution of brook trout in the UK, they do occasionally turn up in stock trout fishing lakes, although this is incredibly rare and it's normally only very small numbers, so targeting them in these lakes is very difficult. There are, however, some naturalised populations. There are at least three in Scotland and one in North Wales where these fish are self-sustaining and breeding in small rivers that go into large lakes and locks. People do seem to be very hush-hush about these populations, but one thing I will say is they don't seem to be causing any problems with the native wildlife. They're all fairly remote locations and they seem to be just a colourful extra more than anything. In terms of habitat, being a river spawning fish, naturalised populations of these American char are few and far between in the lakes, but as I mentioned, a handful do exist in some remote areas. The females dig a red and males will rush in to fertilise the eggs. In America, brook trout can get up to double figures, however the British brook trout are way, way smaller. For some reason, you very rarely get them over a couple of pounds, they just don't get big over here. So that's the two distinct species, let's look at the hybrids. Now the most popular one is the tiger trout. It's a mixture of a brook trout and a brown trout, and they're fairly widespread in stock trout lakes pretty much replacing the brook trout as a sport fish now. Getting much bigger than most brook trout, they exhibit vivid markings in between a brown and a brook trout, and they're a fairly distinct looking hybrid. You're not likely to mix them up with a brown trout or a brook trout, they look pretty different from both parent species. They don't generally occur in the wild, and the name comes from the stripy flanks. They're a very aggressive feeder. The other one is slightly more new on the market, and that's the Spartic. This was an experimental mix of Arctic char and brook trout, which are much more closely related than the previous hybrid. As char are harder to come by in fish farming, this is a fairly rare hybrid, but it does turn up in some fisheries, and essentially, it just looks like a large char. They're very difficult to tell between both of the parent species. If you catch a large char, in a stock fishery, it's likely to be a spartic. If you're not sure, it's always best to ask the fishery, have they stocked any spartics? And if they have, you know that's what you're gonna get. So before we finish up, let's look at the defining features on how to tell the difference between an Arctic char and a brook trout. And there are two very easy ways to identify these fish. The first one is that char have a forked tail and brook trout have a much flatter paintbrush tail. So you get a good look at the tail if you've caught one or if you've found one. If it's forked, it's a char. If it's more flat like a paintbrush, it's a brook trout. The other way is if you look on the back. If it has squiggly patterns on the back and is heavily spotted, then it's a brook trout. While the char have a more solid colour on the back and fewer spots. So as long as you get a decent look at both of these fish, although they do look very similar, those couple of ways should put you right in how to ID them. Don't forget, if you want to learn more about UK fish, do grab a copy of my book. There's a link in the description if you want to find out more. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to the channel. It takes two seconds for you and it really helps the channel out. Go and have a look at some of the other UK fish ID videos we've got on the channel, as well as the underwater and angling content on here. See you next time. Cheers. If you enjoyed this vid, why not check out this other video right here? If you can, please subscribe to the channel. It only takes a couple of seconds and it really helps me out. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.